<laughs> D.W. Griffith, Cecil B. DeMille, David Selznick, John Huston, Michelangelo Antonioni, Francois Truffaut, Alexander Corder, Joseph Levine, all hallmarks in cinematography and known throughout the world. Now, a new breed of generation of filmmakers may bring about their own block-long lineups of movie-going bus. With us this evening to watch one of his early extravaganzas is what may soon become one of the J. Arthur ranks of the 8mm set. This is Timmy Page. He's 13 years old. He's a filmmaker. He's made more than 30 films. He's uh, the president of Viagraph Productions in Stores, Connecticut. My name is David Hoffman. I'm a filmmaker. I make documentaries. And I'm a partner in Amram Novak Associates, a documentary company here in New York. Uh, I was doing a series of films for the United States Information Agency in New England, kind of doing portraits of people, old people and young people. And I was in stores, and I was doing a film on the world's largest antique salesman, or at least he said he was the world's largest antique salesman. And my cousin, who lives in stores, Paul Waxman, said, why don't you come over and see Timmy? Uh, he wants to meet a professional filmmaker. So I went and saw Timmy in the morning, and I liked him, and he liked me. And I, uh, he said to me, why don't you uh, make a film with me? And I said to him, well, why don't you make a film with me? And he agreed, and I came back that afternoon with my wife, and the two of us together made a film. And uh, it didn't take us very long to make. In fact, we shot for about four hours with about 13 of Timmy's friends. And... Uh, the film was kind of a, a portrait of Timmy Page, and I call it a day with Timmy Page. It's kind of a portrait of the movie industry as I see it, and also of young people. Uh, I used not much film, just about one and a half times what I actually shot. And the film that you're about to see uh, was shot April 18th, 1967, in Storrs, Connecticut. Hello, this is Tim Page in the Page basement of 14 Wilbrook Road, Storrs, Connecticut. Uh, I became a movie producer when one of my good friends, Ken Cameron, uh, started to film an adventure film. Well, we decided not to do an adventure film. His was going to be 150 feet anyway. We decided to film a 25-foot film called A Little Fight with Comedy. Uh, I got a pie in my face twice. Michael Flynn, a good friend who you will see in a few movies in a minute, uh, got his pie in the face once. Well, we took this film to the store, we developed it, and we were thrilled about what would happen. Uh, then it came back from the film shop blank. Uh, you may see parts of a little fight, but only as leader tonight. That's very good. Tell me, uh, what we filmed this afternoon, <coughs> describe to me the story you had in mind, because we didn't really understand it. Oh, well, we did a film called The Fall of a Nation, the story of children who have taken over the world. In this film, there was uh, the soldiers of Lollapopovia, taken from Lollipop, and Gamavi, Gamerica. And uh, Gamerica was losing. I was the boy. Betsy Page was the sister beloved. Rick Page was the um, younger brother. We were a family, and we are, in truth, a family. <laughs> okay, now for the close-up of the younger brother. Talking. Now be talking, Hal. Hold it, you, you guys know? Okay, we'll be right beside you. Peace together. Talk. Okay, now for the sister of the mother. Hey, come on. Hey! hey it. <laughs> okay, okay, now get my face. Hold it. You ready? Yeah. Hey, now that was good. Uh, I never really use a script. I prefer to have a rough outline and then uh, just improvise. And like, uh, I'm known to say uh, to the gang, uh, anyone have an idea for a scene? Uh, I never really use scripts. I sometimes, well, <laughs> use, I use, sometimes have written a script and I feel that it's a waste of tape because sometimes I've got just enough to kill the guy off. Then I find out I've got about 10 more feet left, so we usually end up filming characteristics, everyone doing things that they did often in the picture. Woo! Okay, now no. for a shot of Ken laughing meanly. Okay. Oh, this will be great. Action! 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 Action!
Camera! Cut! Oh, that's oh, that was great. great. Now for a while, you'll be sneering cruelly. <laughs> Light. You get ready? Light. Yeah, I'm ready. Action, camera! Pretend you're a... Uh, Light! Can you get it? Light! Light! Action! Action! Camera! Uh-huh! Cut! Do you uh, always star in your own film? Uh, in the film which you may see later, The Immigrant, uh, uh, I did not star. Uh, my little brother starred, and my little brother starred in another film called Lakers, in which I was a screaming lunatic. In our first films, uh, Mike Flynn starred in the first one, my little brother starred in the next. Warbrook Road, Betsy Page was a star. In The Affairs of Peter Lockers, I got a starring role. In The Widow's Via, of course, uh, Anne Beto, who you saw as the uh, lady who kept jumping up and down and knocking kids over fences, uh, starred Where in The Widow's Via. Where did you get your Vida. ideas? Oh, I adore Birth of a Nation, Intolerance, the 1903 version of uh, Great Train Robbery. I love Chaplin and The Gold Rush. I found hilarious. Uh, I like Keaton a lot, and I like uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, not as a particular, I like Mabel Norman. I, I, in other words, I just, uh, I just like all the silent screen stars. I feel that they have almost perfected a fine, uh, uh, almost a universal language when sound came in. <laughs> well, Where film it slowly, but it will be very fast. It's Toby enough, Sam. Comey, Comey yeah, is Comey a permanent is a filmer. filmer. Oh. He's not in the film at all. Okay, now, Tommy, remember, when I say light, it means nothing. When I say action, you start running. When I say camera, you're, uh, he goes on. Okay, get back there. Aaron, off the set. Off the set. Where is it? Off the set is out there. Okay. Light! Action! Camera! Cut. Okay, again. Again, hey, back here. Off the I know, set. I know. Where's Bitsy? Ah, uh, don't, don't. Lights, action, camera. Don't worry, you're not. I got you. Okay, you'll go like this, and then Betsy, you'll go. And I'll go. And Ricky will go, and then we'll get a close-up of Tom. You know, we talk okay? happily, and then he comes You're talking in. happily, and then he comes in. All right. Lights! Okay. Action! Camera! Well, you know, uh, it's sort of stupid, but... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now, uh, now a close-up of Tom talking excitedly. Yeah, we'll be right by in front of him. Me? Can you? Hold it. <laughs> Don't, Don't smile! smile. Lights, camera, action. I have a lot of fun because I think up techniques. I like uh, every so often uh, taking my fist. I thought maybe it would be great to add a thrill. So I said maybe a fist at the camera would be good. And so, uh, so I said, Rick, let's have some fun. You are going to put your fist at the camera hard, you know, and it ended up something like this. And the, ca and the camera sort of shook. And then Mike Flynn would start heaving backwards. No fist would be seen. It created a perfect illusion. And the immigrant has, without the immigrant, we wouldn't have filmed the fall of the nation, depression, bite gland, the widows via any of our best films. Now come, you dare hit me! Lie down. How am I supposed to do it? I'll show you. Why don't I just jump over? Toby, her? does this create an illusion? I uh, look through the. Uh, Yes. Good. Good. Too good an illusion. Where's the ramrod? You lost the fuse on that. Fight. Action. Camera. Lost the ramrod. Cut. Oh, sorry. Did I get you? Oops. Oh, Kobe. No, I'm okay. Okay. Well, you're a director. You really yell a lot. Now, why is it that they take all that? Why do you suppose they help you out so much? Their hands. That's one of the reasons, at least. I know for a fact that when I go to school, uh, I speak about my movies often as uh, not only the films I make, but the films I collect. And uh, so these people decide they, uh, 
they come up to me, even my worst enemies, they come up and say, Hey, Cage, can I be in one of your movies? I say, uh, drop by and have a screen test sometime. We don't have screen tests, but it gets them off my back. Uh, meanwhile, the ones that I do admit, I admitted Ann Benno, and I'm not sure why, because that was where in my early days when I had 10 people. Now I've got over 30, and uh, a lot of them are ape-like morons. Mm. Uh, so not everyone is like equal as an actor, huh? Yes, I've got first, seconds, and thirds. Uh, first, I feel I have good, uh, great acting talent, and these are uh, Ken Cameron, Ann Benno, Cindy Matkin, uh, Rick Page, me. Uh, Mike Flynn and, uh, let me see, I believe I have another, Amy Sandberg. Now, what is it about them that makes them better? Is it their, I mean, since they're silent films, it isn't their voice. It must have something to do with their movement. Uh, well, I used to like Amy a lot. <laughs> You'll go like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, held it. Now, no, 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 that. At the camera, of course. Camera, and when you fall, don't land on one of these rugs. Oh, I like them. Okay, lights, action, camera. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you haven't gotten any lights, action, camera. Lights, camera. Cut. Oh. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna ruin the whole thing. That hurts. Oh, it won't yeah. hurt now. Yeah, if I don't extend that, oh yeah. I don't worry, he is our uh, stunt man. He yes. wants it. He Look likes it. Stunt man. Almost. He's win. Action! Look camera! Cut! Okay. I'm die. And you'll die at the end of this side. But you'll re reappear in the dream scene. All right. Fight! Action! Camera! Cut! Ah. Ow! Okay. <laughs> I will say that to the film. That hurt. Okay, next scene is uh. Let's see, uh, knocking Paul when Mike comes in and uh, shakes her away. Okay, go. Mike, now you'll hear something. Put your hand up to your ear. Okay, now you girls, Daddy, jump on Mike. Untie, untie. <laughs> Okay, now get her on time. Okay, now you girls run away. Mike, you. First get the girls running away, then get Mike going like this, and then run. Okay? Girls run that direction. This direction. Okay. Hey, right. action. Tara. Go. Me out before you chase. Okay, now, and you'll push Dean off. Cut. After our first film that we tried, Affairs of Peter Walkers, we uh, decided to use the close-up. Uh, we made far advances in technique, not in story, plot, filming, or anything else. Well, filming in a way, technique, but <laughs> uh, in this film, because we used close-ups for the scene where, uh, uh, oh, well, the close -ups. what made you use close-ups? What gave you the idea? Why did you like it? Well, they were almost vital for this because in this church scene, uh, singers are there, and we had to get them singing, you know. And then we had to get the actors' faces who are getting married, you know, going. Wilbrook Road, time 1958. Well, we opened it just like Sunset Boulevard. In that <laughs> A marriage. Me and Betsy. Neil Allen, she can. <laughs> the minister is eight. Singers at the wedding. Oh, boy. Oh, promise me. Okay, now she gets up. Woo, she gets his bouquet. Uh, what about violence in your films? Uh, violence? Yes, and killing. We have a lot of it. Why? Do you feel this helps us? I don't feel it helps it, but uh, we're not... Uh, you need more to be, uh, I think, a comedian than a tra tragedian. Uh, because, well, comedy, you have to have a gag, and everything has to be precise. But in these films, you can sort of, uh, in a way, let loose, because you don't have to have gags. All you need is a rough outline, and then just... What about the recent filmmaker? Have you heard of Fellini? Oh, yes. Uh, I have... My mom won't let me go to see any of his films. That was a year ago. We've taken advantage of Tim being here in New York for a young filmmaker's convention to ask him a couple of questions. I'm Lewis Friedman. 
Tim, uh, in a year, have you seen anything by Fellini? <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, I, I would like to someday. Have but uh, my mom still won't let me see any of his movies. How soon do you expect to be able to break it? As soon as I'm allowed to see every movie that comes there. I see. Have you made many films since uh, in this past year? I've made quite a few, to tell you the truth. I've made a, at least uh, 20 since uh, that film was made. 20 films in a, in a year? How long does it take you to make a film? <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, it, it's taken me five hours, but it's also taken me uh, three. Have your films improved in the last year, do you think? Uh, immeasurably. In, in what way? <laughs> well, they're a lot more technique-y. They're a lot... I think we can tell a story better. Because if I had shown you uh, the immigrant dying and all that stuff, you might have thought it was a very nice home movie uh, without me narrating it. I'd like to ask David a couple of questions. David, incidentally, Tim, you're how old? Uh, I'm uh, 13. You're not 10. You're no, 13. People David, say I'm 10. <laughs> how old are you? Uh, 26. And you're, you've been uh, filming for us over at the Filmmakers Convention. What do you think of that convention? It's phenomenal. I've never seen anything like it. This is the first time 800 kids from around the country have gotten together to make movies, or rather to show the movies that they've made. And uh, there's kids with no money, and there's kids with lots of money, and there's kids from the East, and kids from the West, and there's kids three years old and eight years old and there's kids 18 years old and they're all making movies so uh who makes the best pictures the rich kid rich kids or the poor kids uh they both make great pictures poor kids seem to make pictures that come out of their own life that come out of their the lives of their friends the lives of their fathers and mothers and the lives of their community the rich kids seem to make films that don't come out of their lives at all but come out of what they see colors lights kind of uh lines forms shapes the poor kids are more involved with reality. The rich kids are more involved with surreality. Is Tim uh, typical of a young filmmaker, do you think? Uh, uh, Tim is, 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 yes, Tim is, is a good example of what's happening to kids all over. And uh, he's different in that he works with actors where lots of other kids are working just with their house and their car and their dog and, and colors and lights. Let me ask Tim a question. Tim, what do you think about the films you've seen by the other kids? Well, are they good? As a as a whole. Yeah. Have you seen some that you really think are good? Yes. What about most of them? Are they good or bad? Most of them are. Uh, there are a lot of them are alike. I think most of them are uh, sort of right in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some marvelous ones I've seen, and there are also some very poor ones. There's one by a three-year-old girl. And that's a poor one or a marvelous no, one? No. Well. It's uh, hard to judge a three-year-old's picture. Very, uh, for Listen, a three-year-old, it's the greatest film ever the made. The best three-year-old movie. One more quick question. Do you read a lot? Books? Uh, yes, I do. Novels? Yes, I do. Do you I like that? Uh, I prefer seeing films, but I do enjoy reading a great deal. I think it's, I think it's, it's wonderful. As one pseudo-intellectual to another. Thank you very much, Tim Page. Thank you.